And welcome back and good morning. 2.47 in the morning and we have live and continuous nonstop coverage of a major story in Ventura County. The Selimar fire that broke out just after 11 o'clock last night and it's being driven by very aggressive and dynamic 40 to 50 mile an hour winds as you've seen from our shots on the ground on Highway 101 with our reporters and videographers uh, on the front line of this fire and it has burned on both sides of Highway 101. The freeway is completely shut down with a hard closure and has been four hours. The Union Pacific Rail tracks are shut down and firefighters and strike teams are coming in from throughout the uh, Southern California area to help out the Ventura County Fire Department. That is a live shot looking up uh, at Highway 101 is that crossing you see there. This shot is at uh, Solomar Beach and that uh, shot is from Emma Wood Street Beach and that's Henry Galvan, our front line a veteran cameraman who is very familiar with the Ventura County terrain. We just got information that the American uh, Red Cross, the Santa Barbara County chapter of the Red Cross, has uh, opened up the uh, Veterans Building on Walnut Avenue in Carpinteria at 941 Walnut Avenue. Uh, that's just uh, near, right near the fire station if you're familiar with it. And they have that up for anyone who's evacuating. We have evacuees coming up from Selimar Beach. We also have folks on the freeway that haven't been able to get through or have been stuck and they have to uh, shelter in the Carpinteria area and they'll more than likely hopefully get some information to go over there as well. Uh, this fire has been growing significantly since 11 o'clock last night uh, when it was at 125 acres and then it quickly doubled in size and shortly around uh, 2 a.m. it got up to about a thousand acres in size. Firefighters say that the uh, winds are throwing embers in so many different directions and at one point, we saw a shot of the flying embers get up into palm trees on the other side of uh, PCH, right above some of the homes there along the beach. And they were spraying those palm trees with water to be able to uh, get those fires out before you had flaming torches coming down on top of those homes. We talked to uh, Captain Mike Lindbury with the Ventura County Fire Department. And Air Ops is up with a couple of helicopters that are flying and are able to fly at night. And he says there's going to be a significant showing of uh, air resources at dawn this morning in just a few hours. They're ready to go. The pilots have been alerted and they're waiting uh, for the sun to come up and they're going to get the uh, command to go. And they're going to be loaded up with Foscheck from Santa Maria, where they're staging some planes, and also Fox Field, which is in the Antelope Valley, uh, which is a as they fly is uh, the uh, Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area field where they load up on Foscheck. And they'll be making some uh, frequent and aggressive turnarounds. And they're going to go at this uh, so hard uh, with everything they have because the uh, Southern California region has no other big fires. So these resources are all available. And rest assured, everybody's uh, phones are uh, going off right now and they're getting to their planes. Uh, they're getting the strike teams uh, organized. They're getting their uh, incident commanders and commanders centers set up and uh, at dawn uh, more resources are going to be deployed and they're going to see just where they can get an offensive attack uh, on what appears to have been a defensive fire so far. They're very concerned about the railroad uh, ties. The wood underneath the lines is coated with what's known as creosote if we recall correctly. That's not only combustible but it burns in a black cloud. It's uh, very toxic and that's going to be very dangerous. This air Area, as Henry Galvan has told us on the front end, is drought dry for over four years. The chaparral is tender, and even though we've had a little bit of rain, it's uh, not even phasing this uh, chaparral. And then, uh, with that, it's showering sparks down the freeway in all directions. So it doesn't have to be that thick forest land to be able to spread a fire. It can be this chaparral as well. And that hillside and those hillsides are just rolling with it right now. And then, embedded in that, on top of this long list that I just gave you of concerns, is the oil industry facilities that are in there as well. And we have not been able to see what's exactly burning or if any of those are damaged. That could have significant damage to anything that's overground and the fire is burning through and that could be um, yet another very serious uh, implication uh, a result of this fire look at this fire live Solomar Beach
branch uh, burning in the dry grass. That's a close-up shot. We don't know in perspective where it is with regard to a home or the freeway. It looks like... Um, Firefighters might be putting some water on it there the way it's dropping down, but that's in some dry grass right in front of us. So let's pull out and see where it is in perspective to everything else. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We didn't see that fire there before. We saw the hill above it on fire, so it's falling down uh, there and obviously uh, burning in those areas. And, you know, you see this from the freeway when you drive up and down the freeway, and the last thing on your mind is that you would think that that could uh, develop into a, a wildfire. At least uh, many people wouldn't think that. It's just not typical of what we uh, believe is an area that would just have this roaring fire. But not only do we have a fire, but you can even see in the foreground there some of the wind still blowing. And when CJ was on, he was uh, uh, trying to uh, be able to capture his breath above the fire and the, the wind there and uh, project beyond what is a howling wind there in a very uh, dangerous fire situation. And he had to move two or three times to get into a safe zone. Uh, our other camera crew, Paul Mahalik, is there, Senator de Los Santos has been talking to residents who are evacuating with uh, blankets over their shoulders and getting to their cars. The Highway Patrol and Santa Barbara County Sheriff on that end of the fire are helping people get out safely and calmly and directing them to a safe location to get up into Carpinteria and get to that Red Cross shelter on Walnut Avenue at 941 Walnut in Carpinteria. And they've got Carpinteria residents on call to come in and staff that. This is Henry Galvan's shot. He is our frontline veteran videographer in a mobile unit. Outside, the air is superheated. It's full of this uh, burning embers. And as we often say, we use the line of who knows what is in that um, that could be uh, inhaled. He's in his vehicle, and he says that he's in the center of the freeway in an area where if uh, the situation changes, he has an emergency exit to get out and get out safely. So while he looks like he's particularly close, and he is, and we appreciate appreciate his effort to be right there on the edge of the front line of this fire. He is uh, ready to go if this fire should uh, get somewhere bigger or near him. He's very familiar with this area and has lived down there for a long time and has commuted around here so he knows what could flare up and in what size the flame links might be. What is not predictable here is the throw of the embers from other locations and at times he was standing there with just this uh, wave of burning embers coming towards his camera and uh, his vehicle and even getting uh, inside the vehicle which is extremely frightening so he backed out until he got to a better and safer position. This fire not only flanked the freeway there, it jumped the freeway and that's why we have, if you know the area, uh, by 33, Emma Wood State Beach, uh, the tunnel, and then over where CJ is, over at Solomar, and the voluntary evacuation of Faria Beach. If I was a resident of Faria Beach, I would certainly have my ready, set, go plan as well, and either leave or be ready to go as well. Those words are very important. The fire department reinforces that no matter where you live, whether it's a fire, an earthquake, or a flood. Ready, set, go. It's your plan and your uh, package of emergency supplies, your important papers, your medications, your pets, uh, and things you need for your pets, and a plan on where to go. And when they say go, by either giving you a reverse 911 call, knocking on your door, or uh, coming down the street with a bullhorn, as we have seen, they say go, you should go. Because uh, by the time it gets there, you could be in great peril trying to figure out your plan then. All right, let's go uh, back uh, to the scene. Uh, recently, we talked to one of the evacuees who was uh, asked to get out and stop briefly to tell us uh, what was going through their minds as they were told to leave. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of us now. Uh, we're probably going to head to Santa Barbara. I think our house would be okay. It was built not too long ago. Uh, I don't think there's been a fire uh, here. Um, I'm 29 years old. I don't, I don't think there's ever been a fire uh, at this hillside here. And that's a resident that uh, Senator De Los Santos spoke to. Uh, as you saw there, they uh, were evacuating, and it looked like some of them might still have been in their robes or pajamas, and they were grabbing what they could, and they were uh, awakened on uh, Christmas Day at night. 
uh, if they had already gone to bed and the firemen, as we understand, were going uh, door to door, knocking and pounding on those doors, getting people's attention. No doubt we've seen in the past blowing their sirens and horns as loud as they could to try and get the attention of everybody in there and explain to them that a serious uh, evacuation order was being called out for that area. Uh, we are streaming, and if you know of anyone in Ventura County that may not be aware of this, that needs to know, we're on uh, KEYT.com, and you click right on it there. If they're not able to pick up our station where they live, and you know of them, and you want them to be aware of this, have them go online and uh, watch our streaming coverage, and we'll have the very latest information from on the ground with our reporters and videographers, Captain Mike Lindberry with the Ventura County Fire Department, who's been uh, gracious enough to give us some long-form interviews with a lot of coverage ground on what's going on. And also residents who have gone on the phone lines with us, and if you're there too and can make a call to us, uh, we'd appreciate that as well. Earlier, we found out there were 30 homes in the Solomar Beach area that were threatened, and those are the ones that are being evacuated, just to let you know what we're talking about in the way of housing. But on the hillside, uh, for those of you not familiar with this area, that's not residential. It's not developed with homes. It's uh, agriculture. It's a, a wild uh, area, and it's industrialized with some oil. We're at 1,000-plus acres uh, burned in the Solomar Beach fire. Uh, the next area is threatened. Uh, where CJ is, he's at Solomar Beach, and there's some concern that it could get up to Faria Beach. Where Henry is, um, he is at the uh, tunnel at the state beaches. That's Emma Wood. As you drive southbound, uh, that's where you see a lot of the surfers, and the road goes over to 33. It's generally around there. But one of the locations that is of serious concern there is the RV Resort and the Ventura Riverbed. Oh, over the years have we seen the flooding there and the rising of the RV hitting the freeway there and those aerial rescues back in the El Nino storm uh, years of that. Now it's bone dry drought dry. Campers are still there and that riverbed has caught on fire several times uh, in the last many months uh, due to the drought dry conditions and in some cases some of the dynamics of people that go down there and start fires. Now we have a wildland fire that could get into that area where you have that dry grass, the bamboo and a run down the Ventura riverbed and that's a very big concern for firefighters there who are already staging to figure out what they're going to do with that at dawn. Once again, the air operations we have seen live on News Channel 3 here in the overnight hours from Solomar Beach involved helicopters dropping water, but not many of them. We saw one, possibly two. Could have been the same helicopter doing a lap around when we saw it. But it's uh, trying to throw some water up on that. We have Chopper uh, 7 out of Ventura County and L.A. County is doing uh, helicopter air ops as well, and they're doing surveillance from overhead. They're helping the firefighters by seeing what is burning, where it's going, what the potential is, and where they can get a defensive line set up. Uh, earlier, we saw fire. Uh, Henry was telling us fire on the ridge uh, above Highway 33 with one wind dynamic and fire down below where he was with another wind dynamic. We have winds that have been uh, described as horizontal and winds that are vertical and winds that are going offshore and some that are going up highway towards Highway 33. And so that's one big mixed bag of winds. Claire Anderson has certainly been watching the power of these winds which are not backing down in the overnight hours. Uh, we had heard Santa Ana winds were coming uh, on the next weekend, and now we have this wind event that's been extended out until Sunday. So everyone's being called out. Residents are evacuating, fire crews are on the front line, and the uh, operations center in Riverside, uh, which looks over Southern California, is uh, waking up everybody to get to their uh, battle stations, as it were, and get the strike teams ready to go if they get called upon, and then decide where to put them all at daybreak. Certainly they're coming in now. The command post uh, for operations will be the Ventura County uh, Fairgrounds, and also that's where they'll put some of the uh, live animals, uh, the large animals that are being evacuated from those ranches there, they'll be evacuated out to the Ventura County Fairgrounds as well. So C.J. Ward has been on what would be the western side of this fire. The winds are blowing extremely strong there and fire is burning around him. Let's go live to C.J. Ward in Solomar Beach at the Solomar Fire. C.J. And, John, we're outside the entrance to the Solomar Beach Colony. You can see behind me, uh, again, the flames that are 
Right here behind us, uh, pretty close, right behind that is the freeway overpass, and we've been watching the flames work their way down from the mountainside behind us, and then down underneath that freeway overpass. It's been burning pretty good now for about 20 minutes. And then if we can work our way over this way, we're going to move more to the north. You'll see the mountain here to our left. That mountain right there, the helicopters have made three runs and hit it. In fact, you might be seeing another one coming in right now through the smoke up there at the top. Uh, they've been making water drops, and these guys, I'll tell you, are just absolutely amazing. They come in and they make a nosedive along the ridge line, drop the water, and then scoot up high and get up over the freeway. It's pretty much, it's really amazing to watch these guys work. Um, but really, the, the one thing that we're watching here is the fire protection right here along PCH. Uh, you can see how dark it is over here. Remember, we saw that maybe about a half hour ago, 45 minutes ago. That was just an inferno. So that's darkened, and we do have firefighters down that way, but uh, this right here seems to be one of the areas uh, that they've been hitting with the water and the helicopters. One thing we've also noticed too. The winds have started dying down over the last hot, maybe the last 30 minutes, uh, and they've been pretty consistent out of the north, and I think that's been pushing the flames more this way and along maybe parallel to the 101 freeway. So that's actually a good sign for a lot of the homes, uh, because at one point the winds were coming to our back and pushing it over the freeway toward these homes right along the beach at Solomar Beach. The winds have been changing a little bit, and they're just not as strong as what it feels like. Again, maybe in the last 30 minutes or so. Uh, so so that's the latest out here uh, from Solomar Beach. We're going to keep an eye on the situation here. Uh, it does seem to be calming down a little bit. John, we're going to send it back up to you on TV Hill. C.J. Warren on the front line of the Solomar Beach fire where the dynamics as it continues to burn calming down where he is but the acreage is so large right now at over a thousand acres it's going to be a handful to try and slow this down and to get fire equipment around all sides of it. This is going to be an extended firefight and recovery for that area and we're in the very early stages here at 3 o'clock, 3.04 in the morning. Claire Anderson has been on this since its inception, watching all aspects of the weather on this fire, and she's in our first alert weather center. Claire? Yeah, John, we were talking about the winds that started really picking up around 6 o'clock from Santa Barbara down to Ventura. Very gusty conditions, and we were hoping nothing like this would happen, but the winds have not helped the situation at all. Now, CJ was talking about the winds are calming down a little bit. Again, initially, that wind advisor was going to expire at 3 a.m. this morning, which was right around now, but it has been extended. I do want to talk about the fire forecast. Again, this is the fire forecast that's put out from the National Weather Service, from the information from the firefighters. So looking at forecast for today, again, heading into Saturday, winds are still expected to be pretty breezy, but for tonight, they do look like they're going to calm down a little bit, so that is good news. Hopefully they calm down sooner than that. Humidity levels, 25% heading into the afternoon, and we do drop. Again, plenty of sunshine expected for today. Not much in the way of clouds or fog. Later tonight, Saturday night, we do see some increasing with the humidity. Those flow of the wind is going to come more from the ocean versus coming inland of what it is now. So more moisture into the air, which is good. Temperatures staying pretty cool and overnight lows tomorrow night dropping into the 30s. Now, do you want to talk about those peak wind gusts? I've been watching very closely. This last 42 mile per hour gust was around 225. So we're still seeing gusty winds throughout the evening or into the morning hours. Gusty winds up in those mountainous areas down towards Oxnard as well as Ventura. We have seen 50 mile an hour gusts in Santa Barbara. And again, this same area is all under that wind advisory. What we have been watching also is our live storm tracker Doppler radar has been picking up the smoke. Not seeing as much of it right now, but all of this green here, that is the smoke from the fire, not rain. We usually use the Doppler to detect the rain. Now it's the smoke, and it shows you a really good indication of where the wind direction has been going, coming from the mountains, heading out to the ocean. And that's exactly the direction that the fire has been going. Here's that wind advisory again from today through noon on Sunday. This was extended. This is, again, in the forecast area for that fire with gusts possible up to 50 miles per hour. 
Look at this future wind cast. Not going to be calming down. Here is 4.30 a.m. Double digit wind speeds in the 20s still. Santa Barbara, Ojai area continues through 5.30. Hour by hour still seeing it. Here's the good news. It looks like we do start to get a little bit of a break by 8 a.m. this morning. But what's going to happen? We look like we're going to have a Santa Ana event on the Ventura County area, which is very strong. Dry winds coming in. Right now, it looks like the forecast, we could see a little bit of a break on there and some more onshore flow, which could increase the humidity. So, John, we're watching these conditions very closely, waiting for any updates and watching the wind gusts as well. Back to you. Okay, that's good information about not only what we're dealing with now, what's ahead, and those words we did not want to hear, Santa Ana conditions over Ventura County. This fire broke out just after 11 o'clock tonight, and now we're at over 1,000 acres, and the uh, infrastructure is starting to form on all flanks. First of all, the fire is burning on a number of different flanks. It has reached the uh, ocean communities at Solomar, but has not burned houses there. There is a fire defense there, and as you see in the air, air operations with helicopters are up with as much as they can get at this hour in the way of uh, helicopters that can fly and drop water. And and behind them and staging at dawn will be the aircraft that will be coming out of Santa Maria and Foxfield in the Lancaster area or Antelope Valley area, which is another major uh, firefighting resource tanker base uh, with Foscheck uh, loaded up there on those planes. The pilots have been uh, awakened and they are staging for the go sign as soon as the sun comes up and they are cleared to fly. That operation is going to come together with not only the tankers, but also uh, the uh, commanders in the sky in the air attack planes. For those that are evacuating from Solomar, they are able to go over to the Veterans Memorial Building in Carpinteria, and that's at 941 Walnut Avenue, and they're being told that. What's also uh, helpful there as well is we have people that have been stuck on the freeway or stuck in Carpinteria since the uh, freeway has been shut down uh, at Bates Road, uh, and they have uh, hunkered down in Carpinteria, no doubt looking for a place to eat or get coffee or sit in the parking lot, but now they have a place to go where the Red Cross will give them the comfort and the shelter, food and uh, a cot possibly is being set up so they can um, have some security there and they're probably letting all those people know as oftentimes they stage over in the parking lot by um, <clears throat> Casitas Pass Road at Albertsons and they'll get them over there to that shelter. Uh, Ventura County northbound at 33, that's shut down as well. We have a hard closure of the freeway and um, they are going to keep it that way until they can uh, get the flames down down on both sides of the freeway and they have so much of the way emergency crews that need to go in and do after that assess the freeway the guardrails the center divider uh, also Union Pacific assessing the railroad tracks the uh, ties the uh, lines uh, power lines in that area Edison will be in there as well to see what burned up SoCal Edison will have a crew staging hotline will be with them no doubt and um, they'll have uh, those big trucks there to see what burned down and what power needs to be restored along that way uh, for the trains, for the uh, industrialization there, the oil, ag, the homes. There's so much that's going on here beyond this uh, fight with the fire uh, as uh, everybody that's involved, police and fire and the highway patrol uh, are coordinating their efforts. The um, fire uh, that is burning in this area is, as we say, in Chaparral that hasn't burned in uh, anyone's memory. Uh, we do remember a fire on the La Conchita to Bates Road Hill uh, back in the late 80s. Uh, for sure, but we don't have too many fires that burn in that particular area uh, of our coastline. And here we have this one. And you might be asking, uh, how did it start? And an eyewitness earlier this uh, morning, Candy Dugan, said her husband did see it up on a ridge or up on particular property there that might be oil industry property, and that's where he first saw it. So it didn't start in the uh, words of this eyewitness on the ocean side. It started on the mountain side, and it started on, a, on an industrial property there, as we call it. There's a close-up look at the fire, and you can see how it's burning in that dry grass and chaparral there. But as you... 
pull out. Um, that is a, what happens there is that fire won't particularly get to a house because of the size of that. But what it does is throw these embers in the air and that creates spot fires everywhere. And there you go. You see all the spot fires that are being started by these embers, as opposed to some fires you see where there's a line of fire that crawls up and down mountains. And um, you see how that burns. This is different. This thing is just uh, erupting with embers. Earlier tonight, our videographer, Henry Galvan, was on the freeway and the wind shifted and all these embers showered our mobile unit, his uh, camera image. And he had to uh, back up, as he says, and back with the fire. Even the highway patrol spun around to make sure he was okay. And he said he's moving away with, as the fire is moving towards him. And uh, these images you're seeing live are from our crews that are right there on the fire scene, powered up and uh, giving you shots from the point of view that the firefighters are looking at and deciding upon as well. They, um, our crews also have emergency exits. Uh, they are certainly in a high risk uh, area, but I want you to know that they are veterans that are aimed the right direction. If they need to get out, they're going to uh, cut that picture and go to clean air and a safe spot. Uh, the evacuations are uh, mandatory at Solomar Beach, and everybody there knows that already. There's so much going on in Solomar right now. That's about 30 homes. Um, last we heard, Faria was under a voluntary evacuation and uh, might be wise to, uh, to leave if you're at Faria. And on the bigger, broader scale on the other side of the uh, fire, which is the um, Emma Wood State Beach area or the RV Resort, uh, they're certainly trying to figure out what that fire is going to do over there and whether or not to evacuate uh, those RV campers who are there for the holiday weekend. I've been looking forward to this great California weather for the Christmas weekend for so long. The riverbed is extremely explosive with dry grass, and we have seen fires there. And that fire uh, zone, if it gets some hot embers, is going to be hard to contend with as it goes up and down that corridor towards the uh, Ojai area or back down towards a 101. But the firefighters know all this. They've been planning for this for years and they were ready to go last night when the fire broke. They just had to get a size up of it and it certainly was in a not too easy location to get to up in the hills of uh, private property uh, that they have access to. But those have those windy roads and uh, too many areas that are just uh, much harder to get to than flanked by freeways. So we're going to take a break here and come back and get the latest from our crew out in the area, the fire department and the wind conditions as we move through the 3 o'clock hour with a major story. The Solomar Beach Fire burning at over 1,000 acres in northern Ventura County on this Saturday morning.